Okay, so we'll get going with this. If you need a certificate of participation participation today for your LPDC, go ahead and you can scan that and sign in. And I can also put this um, link in the chat for you. Um, once you um, submit it, um, Oh no, that's my feedback. I'm getting those two mixed up, but we'll do a certificate of participation at the end um, with a feedback question. But if you do both of these, then I can make sure um, you get something for attending today. Um, we've been doing Zoom for a while, so I'm just gonna slide over that. Um, and just um, again, um, I'm here to, I'm Melissa here to help. Pam and Rita are on as well. Um, do you guys want to say hello? Sure. Uh, thanks, Melissa, for uh, getting this final yearly coffee chat together and having Becky join us. Certainly appreciate that. My name is Pam Hunt. I'm the chief administrator uh, with the West Region for Tech Prep. Good morning. I apologize for no camera this morning, but... Um, Thanks, Melissa, again, for inviting us. This is great. It's been a great partnership working with you and the tech prep, you know, the SSTs and the tech prep team combining these efforts. And again, thank you all for joining us. And Becky, thank you again for being able to participate in today's meeting. We know it's kind of hitting that summer break. And for all of you that are on here, we appreciate you taking the time to be on here with us. So more things coming next year, hopefully. Thanks. So here are our um, the rest of our team supporting us. We have Deb um, from um, the West Region at Edison State. Pam's going to have a new uh, coordinator joining for Clark State. Do you want to introduce her name? Yes, it's Rosie Matthews. Um, she comes to us from um, Clark Shawnee, straight from the classroom. So I'm very excited to have her join us. Uh, she'll bring great expertise to our region. And Wonderful. hopefully the next time we get together, I'll have a, a headshot for you. All right, I'm excited to meet her. And then in our Southwest region, we have Terry Bennett and um, Megan Reed. Terry works um, with Southern State and Cincinnati State and Megan works with Miami. Um, and I think Terry was on and I think Deb is on too. So if you have questions, um, about something particular um, that someone can help you with, please don't hesitate to ask us. So again, our purpose of our coffee chats is just to give you some just-in-time information to build our professional networks too about who we can reach out to. Um, when we have that question, we're not sure how to handle or we just need some advice. Um, and so all of these, um, all of us can help um, with that. Um, today's topic is um, just a quick Q&A on civil rights and CTE. We know that that's getting more attention and a lot of you are going through um, the self-review of how you um, provide services for special populations in CTE. Um, and some of you may also be working with districts who are in the Each Child on Track project. Um, and so you're taking a look at a lot of different things. So if you have a certain question or particular question for Becky today, feel free to ask um, that right now. And then after we get those answered, she's gonna walk us through how we can use some reports and data from the public um, portal. So Becky, I'm gonna let you take it away. All right. Hi, everyone. So I am Becky Krantz or Rebecca, if you wanna be super, um, professional, call me by my legal name, um, you can do that. I am the Methods of Administration Coordinator for the State of Ohio. So the Methods of Administration Program, if you don't know or have never been pulled for a civil rights review, um, it is a federal program that comes from the vocational guidelines of 1979. Um, there's a whole set of regulations and rules there that the government put together back in 1979 and each state has to have uh, one person that goes through and does reviews for just career technical education. So back in 1979, there was a big investigation and it found out that career tech is vocational education as it was called at the time, um, is discriminatory against protected classes. 
So we've implemented these programs into every state to make sure that vocational education, career technical education is respecting all of the civil rights laws and regulations. We pull reviews each year. Um, so it, it, the way you're selected for a review is that you offer career technical education and you receive any kind of federal funds. So you don't even have to just receive Perkins. Anyone who receives federal funds, Title I, Title II, whatever funds you're receiving and offering career tech is in the selection process for those reviews. Um, then we look at a, disability, gender, and minorities to see the disproportionality in the um, rate of students in career tech versus the overall population enrollment. The disproportionality there is given a range of numbers for how disproportionate it is. I'll give an example. If it's 10% over or under, you would get one point. And then we organize those by points and the highest scored buildings that offer career tech are chosen for those reviews each year. So if you haven't been chosen for a review or you don't know about this program, probably because your population is proportionate to your overall enrollment and therefore you never may ever be chosen for the review. However, all of these regulations still exist and they're still laws and you still have to follow them. Um, one of those regulations is admission requirements, which we know has kind of in the past three years or so, um, admission criteria has been a hot topic. That comes from the Office of Civil Rights. That's not coming from ODE necessarily. It's coming from the Office of Civil Rights telling us, hey, we noticed in Ohio, you guys have a lot of admission criteria. However, you're not allowed to have admission criteria. So please take care of that. So that comes from them. Th these are all federal regulations. I, I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have in this scope. And if you do have a question, um, feel free to just unmute and, and talk openly about it. Or if you want more information as well, I'm happy to meet with you afterwards. Give it a minute with our awkward silence. I have no problem with that. Um, again, if as we're going through the uh, data side of this, you come up with a question, feel free to put it in the chat and I can address it at the end. Um, or if we get off of here and you think of something, feel free to reach out to me anytime. <clears throat> I'm happy to walk you through any of those regulations. I think the most helpful thing you could do is go to Google and type in 1979 vocational guidelines and read through them. There's a lot in there that you probably have never seen or heard of before. Um, and they, again, have been around since 1979, so it is interesting. One of them, I can tell you, is a notice of career technical opportunities. Every school that offers career tech has to post publicly a notice of all of their programs and the admission requirements to all of the programs. Very unlikely that exists in any school. Um, sometimes they try to piece it together, so if they have a list of their programs and they don't have an admission criteria, I'll just have them, if a prerequisite is necessary or something like that, they'll have to add that in there. But then it also has to tell you the Title IX and the 504 coordinator for the district. So all of that has to be in one place at one time, not common to ever find, but again, it is a notice of career technical opportunities that's been around since 1979 that every everyone who offers career tech should have. So it is interesting going through that, reading through all of the, um, requirements to meet those federal guidelines. Um, and if you guys don't have any questions, I can go ahead and get started with the data side of it. Um, this is a kind of a comprehensive look at different data. So we're gonna look at publicly um, available data, but we're also gonna look at some reports in the Secure Data Center. All of the data that we provide for districts, um, we're gonna kind of look at. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Let's see. Can you guys see that okay? Oh, I didn't hit share yet. Sorry. Yeah, we can see oh, that. Everyone? Okay, great. All right. So, Again, this is comprehensive. I may go through some of the secure data center reports pretty quickly, just because um, if you 
have questions, we can go back through them later or we can meet one-on-one -on -one and go through them. Um, but here's what we're gonna talk about today. So first we're gonna unpack data a little bit. We're gonna talk about accessing the reports portal. We're gonna talk about the public data that's available in the reports portal, but also is available online. Um, we're gonna talk about the secure data center reports, the equity lab reports, and, and then we're gonna talk about the job data reports. I flipped them, but they flipped back. Um, and then we're going to talk about some upcoming projects that our office has just to keep you guys kind of in line with what we have going on here. Um, let's get right into this. So when we're talking about data, we're normally talking about numbers. I think quantitative data is what our brain kind of defers to when we're talking about data, the word data. So this is just a reminder, the quantitative data that is available to you, we have the public data, so credit or credit card data, um, report card data, the secure data center reports are available to you. We provide districts with equity lab reports every year, the job data reports that Katie Allen in our office has prepared, web exam reports that all teachers have access to, and then any local data that schools are collecting on their own, all of that is good data to use. But just a reminder, and those are the reports we're going to go over here today, but just a reminder that the qualitative data also is just as important. So we can look at these numbers and we can find these gaps and we can make a lot of assumptions. But until we actually talk to the students and talk to the teachers, we won't really know what the root cause is. So we need those interviews, testimonies, surveys, observations, notes. We need all of that to kind of figure out where to um focus our strategies for improving equity gaps. And then just as a reminder, Perkins 5 does ask recipients to make those data-driven decisions. So that's why we have put together all this data for you. So um, we'll talk briefly about accessing the reports portal. There is more information about it available online. Um, you would need an OEDS role to access this data. The roles are superintendent, superintendent designee, secure data center standard level access. And for traditional public districts, community or STEM schools, they have another level of access you could use, which is secure data center student level access. And then the reports portal looks like this. Um, this is, uh, this will not automatically come up when you go into uh, your My Ohio applications. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does automatically appear there by magic. Sometimes you have to request it. So you may have to put a request in to add that app to your My Apps. And then when you have it, um, you will be able to access the public reports available in there and the secure data center reports. So just as a reminder, tech prep and state support teams cannot access the reports portal. So you'll have to send them a clipper screenshot. Um, I, I recommend a clip or screenshot because you're going to see a lot of graphs in these reports and the graphs are not necessarily going to pull through if you click the upload button. What's going to pull through is an Excel spreadsheet with all the data on it and it's not very useful and I'm, I'm hoping they change that um, and it will just upload the graph or the data. Um, but until that happens, you would actually have to do a screenshot or a clip to share that information. So let's go into the public data reports. The public reports are created from the data used in the CTPD report card. The CTPD report card is all EMIS data that you guys self-report to us. This is, uh, and the, the link there is at the bottom that you can click on. Um, we see these are three shots of different um, graphs or information available in that um, report card portal, the CTPD overview, which will tell you the report card grades, and then all of the federal accountability um, results are listed there in different graphs. You can see them disaggregated by different student groups. So I show here the four-year graduation rate in the center, and then the last one there is technical skill attainment, and you'll see it disaggregated at the district level in those student groups. So these are useful for district level reports as are the equity lab reports. Um, to get down into the granular information, you would need access to those secure data center reports. So in the reports portal, we have this public data option. 
you would click on public data. There's a whole bunch of publicly available reports for all districts, discipline, value-added enrollment. We're only gonna talk about the college and career readiness tile here today, just to show you what information is available publicly for college and career readiness. So I, I am not sure why my slides are kind of out of order when they were just in order right before I started this, but this actually was supposed to go ahead. So here, here's where you would find that tile. So it's in the public data tile in the reports portal. You click the reports portal, it pulls up these two tiles, secure data center on public data. You would click on the public data to get those reports. So here are the three reports available in the college and career readiness tile. And if you're in front of your computer and you wanna follow along with this and you have access to the reports portal, please feel free to do so. Um, if not, this these slides will be available to you that you can access um, this information later as well. And for tech prep and SSTs, you can have these slides as well so that you can guide people to where to find this information. So um, we're gonna go into the college credit attainment report first. This is going to tell us a lot of information. So we can see here, I've selected the class of 2021. This is all states, uh, I mean, all districts in the state. And it's going to show us districts by number of students with any college credit. So this is the actual number of students. And then the bottom there is the percentage of students with any college credit. Then it's also gonna show us on the side here, by gender, race, ethnicity, and then economic disadvantage status. So it does break down this information for us a little bit. And again, this is all publicly available public data, um, but it is helpful and useful. You can um, click it by trend data as well at the bottom, which will show you all of these classes compared in a bar graph. So you can see class of 14 all the way through 21 in a bar graphed trend data format, which also may be useful to, it'll show you, I believe, okay, so I'm not positive with this because I only have state level access. I believe it does default to your specific district. However, I believe you can also select all the districts because this is public data. Um, someone can verify that with me later if you'd like, but um, I, again, I can't see it in any other form. But um, our data manager told us that it would default to your own personal district. So Becky, for yes. those of us who can only access the public data, would we be able to do, it's probably not disaggregated by region. Is that correct? Like the tech prep region or the Jobs Ohio region? Or would There is a region view at the bottom here. And it doesn't, I don't think it's actually disaggregated by specific tech prep region, but it is by the different regions in the state. Okay. This is, so, so there is a region view to look at it that way. Um, I don't know. I'll have to do some digging to see how those regions are decided. Okay, great. It might be, yeah, it could just be, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not SST regions. It wouldn't be. Maybe. It could be. Yeah. Um, I'll ask Kelsey and see if she can give us that information. Yeah, we have so many different regions in Ohio that, yeah, it would be good to know what the definition is for region on this. So I do know that you can pull, so if you know the obvious, the districts in your region, you can pull by just district and just see the districts in your region. So whether the region view aligns to that or not, I know there's a selection of, available for that. I don't show it here in this college credit attainment report, but I do show it in other reports coming up. Uh, but I will definitely write that down and find the information for you guys and send it out. All right. Um, the next report we're going to look at is the industry recognized credential attainment. Um, this is what that report looks like here. I've chosen a county, so I've chosen um, Delaware County at the top there. And then you can see all of the tabs at the bottom. So we're looking right now at the state overview, which is the district. We've chosen a county, so it's showing us the county overview for Delaware County. Um, you can choose it by district overview, school overview, prominence by region, student trend, district. So any trend data is over years. 
Um, but there's lots of information and tabs available there to give you this same data, but shown in different ways um, or through different lenses. So you want to choose a graduation cohort. Here I chose the class of 2021. And then you can choose a credential point value. I just chose all of them, right? Because it goes up to 12. And that's you know the what we need for graduation. So here's what we have um, for Delaware County credential point value of 12 or below 619 students attained that in the year of class of 2021. The next report then in here is the Ohio Means Ready or Ohio Means Jobs Readiness Seal Attainment Report. That is what this looks like. Um, this is for the whole state here, class of 2021. Um, and then we're on the overview tab here. So the, the pattern we're looking at here is to find the drop downs for the data and to find the tabs at the bottom. The tabs at the bottom can give you different views of this data so that you have different ways of um, kind of analyzing that in your mind or um, on paper. But these are meant to be visual snapshots for you to visually be able to see. Um, quick gaps in the information. So now we're on the district view tab, which is the same Ohio Means Job Readiness seal um, report, but this is the district view. I've chosen here Cincinnati Public Schools and then um, the class of 2021. So we can see here 222 students got the seal, which is 3.3% of the students um, got the seal for Cincinnati in the class of 2021. It also shows you by student population by gender that got the seal versus the students in the grad cohort. And then it shows you economically disadvantaged race and ethnicity. So it's just a way to kind of target your sports, target your strategies on the student groups that may need them most. Um, now we're gonna take a look at the secure data center reports. So just again, the secure data center reports um, you need an OEDS ID to access them, but they are really helpful. So um, these are the reports I would go to to do most of my digging in career tech because you can you can view most of the reports by pathway level. You can also view most of the reports by the member district level. So you can really drill down and see what member districts, the, the districts that are feeding into your career tech planning district. Um, their specific numbers. So I think that is useful. You need that reports portal, this QR code, this link, all of this will take you to the actual, um, a, a PDF that our data manager, Kelsey, put together for us, which walks you through how to get access to the secure data center. So this would be good for all the tech prep people and the SSTs to know that this exists so that you could help people accessing um, these reports, but also if you are in a school or district and you want to access these reports and you're not sure how to get there exactly, this PDF is a guide. It walks you through it, all the reports available, how they pull the information for all the reports. So it is very useful. Um, again, you go into the reports portal. This is what you see, and you're going to click on secure data center. If you don't have the access for secure data center, you may still have the reports portal tile, but it's only gonna show you the public data tile. It's not gonna show you the secure data center tile. Um, also, another thing to kind of mention is that you have to have that access in the CTPD level. You can't just have that access in your district. If you're in a um, traditional school district that feeds into a CTPD, you have to have it in the CTPD level access to see these reports. So this is just part of the screen you're gonna see. There's many more reports on here. These are just a few of them, but this is the look when you actually log in. I know you may be thinking, Becky, why don't you just log in yourself and pull it up? It's slow. I've done that before in, in presentations like this. And I just rather than have the technical difficulties of waiting for the reports to load, I've done it this way to make it easier for us to get through. Um, so we are going to look at some reports, but also look at the navigation in them. All of this is important in kind of really using these reports to their full benefit um, and really understanding it. So we look at headcounts of students participating in CTE. There's a lot of confusing things in that statement, right? What is a headcount of students participating? What is CTE? 
what we're going to make sure we do for every single report, even the publicly, the public reports, even the report card reports, is reading the report information, which is found there on this eye icon. Um, the report information is pretty much going to answer every question that we have. I think that initially when people look at data, everyone, myself included, you're kind of resistant or confused. That can't be my, that's not right. That is not the right number. Those are not the right numbers. That's not my data. That doesn't look anything like my data because data sometimes is not what we're thinking it is. So we click on this report information to kind of break it down for us. And I know I've worked with many tech problem at many SSTs that are talking to districts that say their their data is wrong and it may be wrong. I mean, this is also a way to find out if there's reporting errors, errors, but typically it is right and we're just not clear on the report information, what what this report is actually pulling. So you want to make sure to click on this. And then here we see that this report is pulling the number of students who are funded in a career tech course aligned to a workforce development program, curriculum code VM, VN, VP, VT, or College Credit Plus. Um, it doesn't include family and consumer science, career-based interventions, senior-only credentials, and B3 curriculum codes. So that's important to know, right, that this is just workforce development courses. And I think once you look at it and, and you get um, you get trained yourself to kind of look at this report information, it all kind of comes easier for you. But in the beginning, you really want to make sure some of these reports are pro polling par participants, some of them are polling concentrators, right? So to get that down is, is kind of um, difficult, but that's why we include this report information so that you can easily click on it and read through it, read through it again, read through it again until you really get who's pulling through there. So this is that report. This is the report information at the bottom. Um, you'll see here we can choose the school year. So any year that we've reported this information will be in here available. Again, this is state level data because that's where mine defaults to. Um, and then there are tabs here at the bottom also, which shows you the demographic overview, the CTPD disaggregate, trend data, district disaggregate. And then you also see the SSID details. So that's why these are secure because it does show you the SSID student number detail. Um, but this is also why they're useful in QPR. You can really go through and unpack. We have teachers that go through and pull all of that SSID detail and line it up to their students to see who's actually pulling through for their web exams. Um, so it is helpful on that end, um, but that is also why they are secure. Um, all right, here is the next tab on that same report, and you can see the CTPD disaggregate is showing you the trend data for all the school years that we have data, and then you can choose a subgroup. Yours, again, will default to your career tech planning district, um, and then you can choose a subgroup as well for all of the dates that, that the data has been reported will show up there. Sorry, I forgot I had things down. All right, um, the next report here is the Career and Post-Secondary Readiness Report. This has a lot of good, useful information. Um, this is a report I think that might be underused right now. So this is a good report to direct um, districts to look at, but also for if you are in a district and you, you need some information, this is gonna give us a lot of information here. Um, the the career and post-secondary readiness report details the various elements of career and post-secondary readiness demonstrated by career tech concentrators from the four-year graduation cohort. So we're looking at concentrators in the four-year graduation cohort. That's what's important to know about these reports here. So um, we have all these tabs at the bottom. We're looking now at the district overview. Um, there's also detail, demographics. CTE and advanced course detail, demographics, work-based learning detail and demographics, and then a district disaggregate and the SSID detail as well. So if you're confused who's pulling through here, the SSID detail can break that down really granularly for you. Um, this is the career and post-secondary readiness detail tab. See how it shows you the bar graph for the trend data for all the class that we have reported this information for. So it shows us back to 2018 
So for your personal district, you can look at this and you can see the decline, of course, for COVID and then how you're going to build that back after COVID. Um, you can see here in the state level data that the class of 2019 was doing great with the 12 industry credential points, and then it fell down a little bit for 2020, 21 and 22, we're kind of building that back up. So it does give you that trend data. It tells you the unique student count. Um, you can also choose it by pathway. So if you just want to see which pathway is feeding into that um, that 12 points for credentials the most, you can you can look at that. Did someone have a question? I thought I heard something. Just real quick, um, yeah. because there's so much detail here. Uh -huh. and, I, <laughs> and I see how um, occasionally you'll have a pop-up that'll talk about the report. Yes. How do we access the information that gives us more detail or description of what we're really looking at? This report, okay, so this report here, the eye icon is here, but this is the same report. This is the same information that we had pop up here. This is the career and post-secondary readiness report. So it's telling you the elements for concentrators in the cohort. And then this is showing us the concentrators in the cohort that earned a high school, earned an honors diploma is the blue bar. Sure. The concentrators in the cohort that have ACD, ACT remediation free, that are SAT remediation free, 12 point industry credentials in a career field. So, so that, that little block that popped up that said report information, is that something that you put in to the presentation or is that something that we locate through an F the FAQ or it's up here in this eye. Do you see my okay. cursor on the screen? Yep. Okay. I wasn't sure if you guys could see it or not. Um, that eye, so it's always there. This okay. is what the actual screen looks like. So at any point you click that eye, I added in there as a block just so we know in the presentation. But at any point you click that eye, it's going to pull up that information. Awesome. Thank you, Becky. Yeah. And I know this is a lot. But also, I, this is not any personal, uh, like if I was doing this with your district, which I absolutely can do, we would have just your district pulled up and, and go through your personal numbers. This is really just giving you an idea of the data that is available. Um, so if you're walking through it right now, if you have your secure data center pulled up, that's great. If you don't, this is just going to give you an idea of what is available so that you can tell them, like, here's the reports we need to look at, or you can pull them up and say, here's the reports I have pulled up. Here's what I want to know. Help me analyze this. We can do that together. So that is that is the tab there that we're looking at. Um, and then now this is the next tab on that same report, which is the career and post-secondary readiness demographics. So the first one showed us the detail. This is showing us broken up by special population and subgroup. So when we say special populations, that any subgroup can be in a special population. So our subgroups are gender, migrant status, and gender, race, sorry. Every student's gonna be in gender, migrant status, or race. So we could see female, male students, which will total our all students, but any of those female male students could be in a special population group um, so any of them could be in a single parent group. So those first two numbers are always going to equal the total amount that we have in our cohort, but all of the other numbers are going to equal anyone, you know, one female student could be white, an English learner, um, a student with a disability, they could fall into many different special population categories. So that is showing us that detail with also just the class of 2021 selected, but you could choose it by pathway or you can just look at a specific subgroup. So if you wanted to just look at the construction pathway for female students, you can pull that information as well. All right, the next report here is the current year concentrator report. We don't currently have a technical skill attainment report in this. Excuse me, I have a question. Yeah. Sure. Um, on the previous slide, when it says unique student count, is that the same as, um, special population? No, the unique student count is the total amount of students. Yeah, it's the total amount of students here showing in this graph. So it's the total amount unique student code for the students. The all student total 
the unique student count will be the male and female total under the unique student count there. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Every individual student that's showing here on this graph. All right, this is an important report for technical skill attainment. We don't currently have the technical skill attainment report in anywhere, really. We have one that's available in the Equity Lab report, but to be able to drill it down by pathway, you're really going to have to use your web exam reports. Um, this is the current year concentrator report will tell you what concentrators will pull through on your technical skill attainment measures. So this is the report I um, guide people to if you're looking to see who's coming through on your technical skill attainment scores or your, um, your report card scores, that's being pulled from your concentrator. So it's any concentrator that has deemed proficient um, in that year is what's pulling through. So the concentrator report looks like this. And again, the report information there I've clipped at the bottom. The current year concentrator report displays the number of students who are career tech concentrators during the reporting year disaggregated by student subgroup. Um, so it's showing you the different subgroups. Again, your district may not have any of these special population groups. It may have one of them. So it's not going to look the same. This is state level data. So it's a lot of students. Your students may, you may have 42 concentrators, right? So you're going to have a different look depending on where you are. Um, we've got the school year that you can choose. It, this will default to your district. This is a member district report. So if you um, are a district that has other districts feeding into it, you can go down and select just one of those districts um, or all of them. It will default to all of them. You can go down and select just one of them if, you, if you'd like to do that to see how each district is feeding into your numbers. Um, and then you can choose it by pathway. So this is helpful. You can you can go all the way down to pathway and member district. So it really does kind of give you um, a bunch of different levels of information here. This is again, the demographic overview for this report, but there are other tabs there. Um, this is the same report, but I've chosen a district, which I blacked out and then I chose a pathway. So you can see how that looks different there for a district and pathway with a sm smaller number of students less special population groups and how that can be useful. So this is just for structural systems pathway and the concentrators that pull through there. Again, it also has the SSID details. So a lot of times in QPR, when we have people saying, my technical skill is fine, I have all my web exam reports here, all of my, you know, my overall passage rate, I don't understand why I'm here. You can go into this SSID detail and see the concentrators that are actually pulling through on those reports. Those are the ones that you need to look at their scores for. So it's not your overall score of everyone who took web exams. The concentrators who, who took the web exams are the ones pulling for technical skill, if that makes sense. Um, and this is another report that we use for QPR as well, which is the post-program outcomes report shows the percentage of students who are employed in apprenticeships in the military in a service program or enrolled in post-secondary education or advanced training within six months of leaving high school. So um, that's the important part here to remember about post-program placement. It's not about graduating. It's not the graduating class. It can be a student who was in your school for one year and was a concentrator and then left and went to a different school and he shows up on your report and you have to follow up with him. It's reporting any student who leaves school. This is just some facts that are included in that guide. How do you get an Ohio IDEA account? How do I obtain a role within secure data access? Who do I contact with questions about SD, SD, CTE, secure data center reports? You can contact me first. Kelsey and Greg actually put the data together. So if it's a question on the actual data or you think there's an EMIS mistake or something like that, you can contact Kelsey and Greg. I'm not trying to prevent that from happening. They're happy to help you guys with anything. But if it's a question of how to analyze the data or how to, or you just have overall questions about the data, I would just go to like me, myself, Brenna, um, SSTs, tech prep to kind of get those answers first before going to technical questions with Kelsey and Greg. And then we're going to quickly look through some of the equity lab reports just so we know what's in there. Um, the equity lab reports are sent out every year. They go out before April um, to the superintendents of the uh, CTPDs. 
They also go to usually the um, CTE director as well, uh, or, or whoever the superintendent has designated to receive the report. SSTs have access to the report, as well as tech prep has, have access to these reports. Um, these are all district level CTPD level reports, so you can't really drill down by pathway in them. They will all eventually be in the secure data center reports. They're just not there yet. So until they all are, we will keep producing them for Equity Labs, which we will be having next year. Um, they have in there the ready or reading and English language arts report, mathematics, science, technical skill attainment report, district level report, um, non-traditional program enrollment, CTPD enrollment by student subgroup, course instructor by gender and race. So again, eventually we won't have these reports because they'll all be in the SDC, but until that happens, we'll keep producing these. Um, this is just showing you two reports that uh, I think are kind of interesting and useful. There's a lot of questions on the CLNA about this, um, which is the course instructor by gender and course instructor by race. So here's what those reports look like. Um, this shows you, again, we're looking at the state report here, so your CTPD report will look different. Um, we want these male and female students, uh, percent of instructors by gender, to balance your CTPD um, enrollment. So for the state, we want these numbers to be balanced with the male and female enrollment for state CTE. That is really kind of how uh, we want everything to be balanced to your overall student enrollment. So same for course instructor by race. Um, and, and it may be that there's 90% of students that are white in the state of Ohio or enrolled into CTE, and that is balanced. I'm really not sure anymore. I had that information back in 2018, but I, I have not kept up with it. Um, I know it is like, it, it's a it's a high number, but um, so if you see that you have 4.4% Black teachers in your teaching CTE in your school, and you have 18% of Black students, then you know that, hey, we need to maybe be, be more diverse or um, intentionally be more diverse in our hiring practices so that we make people feel welcome here and that we have instructors that want to come work for us and stay in our community and feel welcome and appreciated here. That's that's how you can use that information. Um, this is just some facts about the Equity Lab reports. One of these reports released before April. Um, they don't show member school information. They are district level reports. Some of them do show a breakdown of students that come from the different member districts. But again, most of them are just district level reports. State support teams and tech prep can access the reports and they will all eventually be in secure data center at pathway level and school level as well. I, I think I uploaded the wrong presentation here, just by the way, my own prop, my own fault, but um, it's it's the right presentation. I had just changed around some slides. So I, I'll go through this first upcoming projects and opportunities that we have in our office. And then I'm gonna show you some of the data reports that Katie puts on for us. Um, this is the slide deck that I use with Katie and I go through mine first and then she does hers. And I, I thought I had changed it all. Maybe I didn't hit save, I'm not sure. So um, upcoming projects and opportunities we have in the Office of Career Tech here. Uh, we have right now a contract with the AIR and we're creating some amazing resources for justice involved youth. Um, so some pathways to graduation and the CTE supports through that pathway to graduation. Um, we also have, we're going to create one pagers for anyone in the district who deals with or um, is involved with justice involved youth. Um, best practices for them, how to make sure they're getting the credits that they deserve. A lot of times we found out that justice involved youth coming in and out of detention centers and or um, rehabilitation homes will have paper transcripts. And when they come to enroll in school, the school will decide whether they're going to give them a full credit or not for whatever classes they took. So how to prevent that from happening and having those students repeat those courses um, but we have a lot of good resources coming up and that will be available to us this September. We also have our interactive GIS map, which we are rolling out right now. And I think that Leah is going to actually talk about at Ohio ACTE in July. Um, it is awesome. It really does a great job of aligning the uh, in-demand critical jobs in the state of Ohio to our CTE programs that are available in the district. 
so we can see visually those holes where we need to build programs for those in-demand critical jobs. Um, but it also gives us a lot of other information too. It is very exciting and that is going to be released here soon. We also have um, equity ambassador meetings that are scheduled. We were just talking about earlier, every district is allowed to have an equity ambassador, which gets free additional training through AIR. And um, I believe they meet monthly now with Chelsea Canterbury um, to be in line with our equity goals for the state of Ohio. And then we are going to announce our equity for each grants that were awarded um, before July. They will be awarded July 1st. Um, I think that our date for, for announcing those is June 20th, I believe. So those will be coming soon. We got more applications than we've ever gotten for the equity for each grant, so that's great. Um, right now, Katie Allen is putting together a state equity trend data report. So she's putting together all of our trend data for the state so we can see um, the gaps on the state level so we know where to kind of, on our end, um, focus those supports as well. And then we are also participating. So the AFS team and myself and Chelsea Canterbury are participating in advanced CTE opportunity gap analysis workshop in June, June 14th and 15th, which is going to give us a new way to analyze our data and kind of put a range in place for equity gaps. So that is very exciting. And then we can use that for the CLNA and tell people, here's where you may wanna focus your money. Here's where you have the biggest equity gaps available. So that's exciting as well. Um, again, I'm sorry that these slides are not there, but now we're gonna talk a little bit about the job data report. I'm gonna do it super quick because I know we're running out of time and I wanna leave time for questions. So these reports, Katie Allen, who is Leah's assistant, has put together um, some job data reports. We release them all in our CTE monthly newsletter. And if you do not get that newsletter, feel free to drop your email address in the chat and I will add you to that newsletter. It comes out the third or the fourth Thursday of every month. And it gives you all kinds of CTE related information. Um, one of those things that we had every month were these uh, labor market demand reports that um, that Katie put together for us. They also are available online. So what she did to create these reports is she looked at labor market demand data from the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services aligned to Ohio's workforce development pathway by ONET codes. So that's a report we actually put together with ODGFS every year to make sure that our ONET codes are aligned to the correct jobs she pulls that information from EMSI Lightcast. She downloads that data. This is a third-party company that the state of Ohio um, contracts with to pull information. So it's not readily available. It, you have to have a secure code to get it. She has that code. Um, she pulls this information, downloads the data. She organizes all of the data and she comes up with her own she calculates the growth rate and demand supply ratio to come up with her own graph here. So she creates the, the graph and these graphs are, there's multiple graphs. They all have information on them so that you can see what it's actually pulling. The projected growth of health science jobs in Ohio for 2031. So you can see here the projected growth for registered nurses is 134,000 jobs that is projected to be added into the economy by 2031 in the state of Ohio. Um, all of these reports are available here online. You can scan this code here. It will take you to this report. You would basically go to any of the career field web pages on the ODE site. And then at the bottom under related links, you can see it is down here, education and training job data report. So she has all of her reports on all of the career field pathways so that they are available to anyone who does with that information. These are another view of this report is the projected growth in education training jobs in Ohio. You can see elementary school teachers accept special education. Has, has, this doesn't mean that this is the most projected growth, but it's the most projected job openings. It may only represent 1% of growth, but it's showing they're projected to have the most job openings, 49.8% thousand job openings by 2031. And then here we're seeing the projected growth of education training jobs. And this is by 
Um, 10 year growth. So this is what I was saying. It's it's showing that self enrichment is that the top one. Oh, I'm sorry, curators, which I'm not sure what that definition is, um, have the most growth, but it may be that they only had one job posted this year and they project to have 10 jobs posted by 2031. So it's giving you a different idea of what that growth actually means. Instead of by numbers and telling you how many jobs that will be available, it's telling you the percentage of growth. And here's another view. This is telling us the top companies um, for education and training jobs in Ohio currently. And this shows you from October, 2020 through October, 2021, kinder care at Ohio State University. So it shows you those as well. That's helpful um, if you're looking for people to be on your business advisory boards. Um, definitely could look at the top companies hiring for, the, for those jobs and those pathways in Ohio. Um, demand and supply of education and training jobs in Ohio is another, uh, another graph that she puts together there. Um, and another one is the demand for hard skills and education training. I'm sorry, for education and training jobs in Ohio. So this shows you a heat map at the top here of the percentage projected growth. Um, so for example, Medicare would be like any kind of hard skill related to Medicare, um, how to process Medicare, working in Medicare. That's a required skill, hard skill that's needed for education and training jobs, which um, shows with the heat map with it being dark blue that it has a higher growth rate than the other ones. Um, this, and these are the soft skill demands available or that are projected for education and training jobs in Ohio. So these are all, this is all really useful, great information. And she did such a great job preparing these reports and they are all available online. Um, do you guys have questions about this? And I'm sure you do. <laughs> I'm sure you have questions like, what the heck did we just go through so quickly? Um, but is there anything I can answer? Yes, I have a question. Sure. Um, so... I don't even know how to word it. <laughs> okay. But um, with the seals, the Ohio Mains job seals and the 12 point credential seal, when that is being reported, is it reported being reported just as CTE or is it reporting as alternative pathway or both? Or does it matter? I think it does matter. And I'm not sure. Um, okay. I, I've heard other people having this conversation who do know, uh, Brenna Bartlett being one of them. So I can reach out to her and find out. Um, we did recently just pull a, a report showing that um, students enrolled in, in industry credential only programs, senior industry credential only programs, and they're only receiving those credentials at a rate of like 20% which we think is crazy because they're in the program. So why would they ever mm -hmm. see the credential? So I believe there is some kind of reporting issue there and I'm really not sure, um, but I will absolutely find out. And I don't have the screen pulled up. What is your name? Um, Kayla Lowe. Kayla, okay. Um, let me reach out to Brenna and get that answer for you. And then I can mm -hmm. email you later today with the answer. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Hey, Becky, if you would share yeah. that with me too, then sure. I can share it with everyone. Cause I think that's a, that's something people are looking at with those uh, graduation pathways. Sure. Yeah. And, and again, just recently we were talking about this and we were like, is this a reporting thing? Are we not sure how to report it? Is it not being reported? Because we're just saying they're graduating with their 12 important credentials, but they're not necessarily reporting it as a, I don't know. But I, I know that Brenna does, so let's see what she what she has, what kind of answer she can give us. Any other questions? Um, again, I am always available to kind of walk you through this as well. Uh, or someone in, in our office can do it as also if it, you have a um, specific consultant that you enjoy working with, they can absolutely do this as well, or I can join them and we can walk you through it. Um, SSTs, tech prep, any, any of us can help you kind of go through your data and, and figure out there is so much information that we have provided these days 
I mean, it's it's really, we're trying to make it easy for you to focus these supports really where they need to be. So sometimes, you know, there is a gap there that you didn't really even know existed um, until you kind of go through these reports and you're like, wow, we really thought we were doing everything we possibly could for students with disabilities. And we have a million programs for them and we have a million supports, but they're still not passing at the same rate. So what, what can we do to get them there? You know, do we need to change those supports? Do we need to change those programs? But this is what, what this information can tell us. Um, so if you guys don't have anything else for me, I'll pass it back over to Melissa. Let me stop sharing my screen. Thanks, Becky. Thanks so much yeah. for um, sharing all that great information with us. And it's fun to even just start just digging in a little bit and looking at one thing in that portal just to see you know how to make how you can pull different reports grab different information and get familiar with how to use that absolutely um a couple updates for you guys next year these are the dates for the statewide ctpd um cte and special education leaders network meetings um, I'll send out a reminder in the fall um, with the calendar invite um, too, so you can have them saved on your calendar. We did move the day from Thursday to Wednesday, um, mainly because um, ODE's Office of Career Tech has their meetings on Thursdays. And so they were not able to come um, if we um, invited them for a presentation or just to sit in and listen to the discussion. So um, we changed that um, so we can have Becky and Brenna and Chelsea um, visit us more often. The other thing I wanted to tell you is that um, the Office of Career Tech and the Office for Exceptional Children are providing more Career Tech Planning District consultants in Ohio. And next year, Region 10 and Region 13 will each have their own CTPD consultant. Um, we aren't sure exactly who those are going to be and which one I will be in, um, so we will keep you posted. Um, but for now, just keep thinking nothing's going to change. Um, we'll just keep sharing the information as we have um, this past year and um, work it out next year as we move along. Um, Pam or Rita, did you want to share anything? I know you guys are finishing your end of year items. Um. Really, as many of you might know, uh, we're coming to the end of our grant cycle. So that would be June 30th. Um, I know both Rita and I have submitted our request for proposal for tech prep uh, regional funds. So we continue uh, can continue the services that we provide. So both of us have submitted our RFPs and we've got our fingers crossed that we will uh, the governor will sign the budget on time and funds will be released and we will know better about what our plans are for the future. Um, and now Rita and I are uh, hastily working on our end of year reports uh, that will be due here in June. So, you know, done with the RFP on to the end of year report. Uh, appreciate Melissa and the SSTs for our regions. Um, that contribute and participate and collaborate with us. Um, but I know that's the two things that we are currently working on. Rita, do you have anything you would like to add? No, you pretty much covered everything. We're just closing out the year, as you mentioned, and I'm excited to start next year just waiting on the governor's budget. <laughs> And then one last item, um, Rita and I uh, combined efforts in the Southwest and West region uh, to bring a quarterly meeting of our work-based learning coordinators together. So on June 7th from nine to 11 at Warren County Career Center, both the West and the Southwest Tech Prep regions will bring together work-based learning coordinators or those with work-based learning responsibilities um, for really a meetup. And um, Chelsea Canterbury will be there that day in order to give ODE updates related to work-based learning um, available to at answer questions. So for those of you who may not have work-based learning uh, responsibilities, your work-based learning coordinator for your district in the West and the Southwest, which would be 
Region 10 and 13, I believe, for SSTs. Um, they've been invited and most everyone participates. So I appreciate the opportunity to bring forward that um, convening. All right. So I had put the link in the chat already for feedback. This will give you your certificate of attendance for today. And um, with that, that's our last uh, coffee chat for the year. And we look forward to seeing you again in the fall. We'll reach out and uh, get these dates on the calendar for next year um, and have a great summer. If you have any questions, we're gonna hang on for just a minute. Um, so feel free to unmute um, and ask and I'll stop recording um, for that.